Hey family, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you. How you doing? I hope all is doing well. I'm glad that you are here. I'm glad that I can um, share information with you. Today I have something a little different. So whatever side of the diaspora that you may be on, um, I believe a lot of of those of us that live in urban areas, um, we uh, understand what this can, you know, be like for a lot of people in our families. Uh, and I won't just say, I, I, I'm not going to limit it to urban areas. Living in America is what I should say. Um, and there's a story. Um, I'm sorry. I had to um, cough, actually. But here's a this this is very interesting. Um, and this letter is actually uh, sent to me by way of Nicholas Lawman. Nicholas, I want to thank you for your open and your honest integrity. And um, let's get to this story. Uh, and the name of it, When Life in Prison is Better Than Your Childhood. Now that's some deep stuff because a lot of us don't want to believe that. We don't want to believe that living with psychotic parents or relatives or being addicted to the drama, having no way out of the ignorance and the madness and drama on a constant daily basis. Some of us have to really live in those environments and for a lot of people, they think that a life in prison is better than a childhood. So let's get into this and I want y'all to listen with your, not just your ears, with your heart and mind. I was never able to trust anyone in my entire life. Family, so-called friends, teachers, authority figures, whoever they were. I couldn't trust anyone due to the upbringing that I had had. This is one of the reasons I never had a best friend. I had tons of people around me all the time. All these people were only around due to any number of benefits that surrounded me. My parents' house was the party house, and my brother was the drug dealer, who I always stole drugs from. People hung around because it was free to get high. There were many people who just stole shit from my house. Or use me and my family. We all know these types of people. So called friends who smile in your face. Talk shit behind your back. And use you for everything you have. You know to offer them. Right? Okay. My parents always lied to me. They never once trusted me with any responsibility. Instead of. Being role models, they threw money at me instead of love and affection. I always had cash for partying, drinking, drugs, shopping, whatever it may be. Every teacher I um, had pushed me through the classes to get rid of me because I was such a difficult student to have around. I was always acting out and not having the fucking common sense to behave. I feel like I was never given a chance to be an adult. My family's home was destroyed in a police raid. I think I can take a time out here. Let me get a chance to uh, mention to y'all that I witnessed a police raid in my neighborhood real close to me like next door type 
Anyway. Um, my family's home was destroyed in a police raid. And it always seemed like the police were terrorizing my family. I mean, every single person in my family that I hung around with was not allowed to have me over. Their parents disliked me and made a plethora of disheartening statements about me. Statements like, that kid is nothing but trouble, brought about feelings of abandonment. All are reasons why I, you know, why I could never trust anyone. I mean, really, they seem to be always talking about me and making disheartening statements about me. Um, all these are the reasons why I could never trust anyone. Shit, even my girlfriends I couldn't trust. I always thought they stole from me, cheated on me, or just used me to pass the time. I could have been, it could have been the drug use creating the many paranoid delusions that I was having. It could have been the fact that I was always using them or cheating on them um, and justifying what I did to them by thinking they were doing it back to me. So it, it could have been that. I thought they were going to do it to me, so why not to do it to them first? That was my mantra. Or my mind could have just been so fucked up from the beginning. I don't really know. When I arrived in prison, though, all those tormenting thoughts of paranoia and par were paramount to my daily life. I could never really, you know, um, get close to anyone in here. After 12 years of being in prison, being shipped around, sent um, to segregation from time to time, I landed in a medium facility. And soon after, my mother took her life. This was around the time that I started to change mine. I searched for the truth in the Bible, and actually, it took some time to control the paranoid delusions that I was having. That's when I came across a guy named Mitch in the intake pod, or the medium camp. It started out as admiration. The guy looked solid, worked out, trimmed up. Women thought he was handsome. Um, he had, you know, an air of smoothness to him. So I, I was checking him out in the admiration type of way. I watched him for a few days. I saw he liked to play dominoes, and I asked him to play. I wanted to be cool with him. We played for hours every day in the sunshine, getting to know each other. Now, my admiration for him elevated as I learned more about him. Dude had a life that I could idolize. He had a super cool family, hot chicks, and if it wasn't for the heroin, his life would be fucking amazing. We wound up splitting up after the intake pod. Mitch went to one unit, and I went to another. Fate gravitated us once again on the same wing of the same unit. We both had decent cellmates, but mine was getting ready to leave for minimum, so I asked Mitch to move in, and he did. Oh, my Lord, and for the next three years, I never laughed so hard. I never imagined having him as a best friend. He was someone... I could literally lay down my life for. I told Mitch repeatedly I would take the rest of his time and add it to mine and let him go home. I didn't have much left to go to, didn't have much left to go home to, is what I should have said. But Mitch had so much going for him, so my statement was valid. I never thought. 
while I was in prison, I would find my best friend. The kid was there for me. On the anniversary of my mother's death, he was mental and moral support for me. He was always taking me down from fighting with other idiots when my mouth would run off like crazy. He helped me get on track with good jobs and let me know who else to trust in here. I told him secrets I swore I would take to the grave. Shit. That would land me a secrets that would land me a life sentence. That's how much I trusted this dude. We ate together, we worked out together, we got baptized together. We shared many memorable moments hilariously together. I saw him get electrocuted for fucking around with a light switch. I saw him break a master lock in half. I watched him land on his head while doing a backflip in the cell. I mean, so cr many crazy memorable things that I would uh, take to the grave and am so grateful to have experienced. Having him in my life here in prison brought a comfort. It's a fly in here, y'all distracting me. I'm sorry if I'm a little, ooh, I want to smash it. Um, having, having, um, him in my life, here in prison, brought such me so much comfort, enjoyment, and calmness. Going through prison, you're not able to be open with people or speak your mind. You can't share your highs and lows, and that creates a mental prison in you as well. Not only are you physically locked up, but you are mentally barred from happiness. Finding Mitch during this bid gave me hope and faith in the future. Shit. He convinced me not to revoke myself and just stay in prison for the entire duration of my probation because he, there wasn't anything for me to go home to. I literally lost every single person in my life from before prison I only had my father left in my life, and he's a major asshole to me. He sees me as some obligation he has to meet. I never had a person in my life that I could be so honestly and say that they love me uh, as a friend. So having Mitch there in that moment of life gave me the desire to do good and stay out of trouble. It was because of him. I wanted to achieve greatness and make something my, my, out of my life. I wanted to live well. Even if it wasn't for myself, it was for his admiration. This was my homie. And whatever I could do to make him happy, I would do. Trusting in someone is a gift that God has blessed us with. Just picture going through life and not having not one person to trust. That means having no one to confide in, no one to share the joys of life with, no one to go to any number of instances with. I never imagined that I would find this while I was in prison. I am so grateful to the courts for sending me here to meet someone like him. I know that sounds crazy. Because the whole first 12 years of my bid were the most painful ones in my life. I resorted back to drug use more than ever and came to the realization of who were really friends and who were just using me. Picture getting locked up and thinking that you have all these people to support you. Then finding out that every single one of them felt 
elated knowing that you were finally off the streets. That shit brings terrorizing thoughts of what my life was about. And that's horrible. It's really horrible. Was I really the monster that they spoke of? It was all an omen that brought so much regret to my life. I can honestly say that the best of times of my life so far have been here in prison with the person that I literally call my best friend. The dread, the terrible thoughts, and the feeling of self-loathing all vanished, gone with the wind. Now, I sit back at the medium camp alone because Mitch went on to a minimum security. The hope I have is that someday once I'm out, I will be able to kick it with him again. Something promising to look forward to while I'm doing this time. And a shining light at the end of the dark time in prison. In retrospect, it's no longer a dark time. Just a few clouds that will pass and lead to a day full of bliss and happiness. Wow. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you for reading this. Over, and I hope that you have a chance in your life to find that special friend who you can honestly trust with the deepest parts of your life. I love this platform and I hope it brings hope to many others out there. The people who don't really know what the true mental tortures that come along with imprisonment and how at some point I know it may sound weird hmm. I love this platform and hope it brings hope to many others out there the people who don't really know what true mental tortures come along with imprisonment and how at some points in existence there is the most beautiful times in one's life while enduring the most painful hmm, can be the most fullest. Again, thanks, Nicholas, y'all. Nicholas is serving time in um, a facility here in Wisconsin, and uh, I really thank him for his open an honest letter. Good luck to you. And be blessed. Be blessed. For those of us who know someone in prison, know someone that's locked down, remember the search circumstances and the situations that got them there. And be mindful to keep them in your prayers. May God bless you.